Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to everyone so today we will be covering a uh, topic on thermodynamic aspects of uh, thermochemical processes so in the last lectures we have discussed about what are the different uh, ways we can actually introduce interstitial elements into the uh, solid substrates to enhance the properties of the surfaces so, in that context we have discussed about introducing nitrogen, carbon and boron and how these three processes are fundamentally different. Okay. Now, this uh, difference in the processes comes from actually the underlying thermodynamics of these processes. So, today we will uh, in this lecture we will talk about some basic concepts of chemical equilibrium based on the thermodynamic principles and then we will move on to the uh, individual processes. So, what does the thermodynamics tell us? So, it tells about actually the equilibrium state of existence, equilibrium state of matter. Okay, that is what we can, what actually if we leave enough time, several contents in a system at a given constant external influences. What are these external influences? Let us take actually a system having like a you know the container having some, some gas for example and we can maintain this at some constant pressure by connecting this kind of a piston kind of an arrangement and by placing some weights on top we know that what is the pressure acting on the system and by placing it on a constant temperature reservoir okay so that we are maintaining constant temperature and pressure now what would be the state of the gas in the system if you leave it for enough time that means once it is at equilibrium so that is what actually we are interested in based on the thermodynamic concepts so for example in this case if it is an ideal gas this p and t given combination will fix the volume of the uh, gas according to this relation. Yeah. So, here is the V is the molar volume. Yeah. So, now actually the we do not have to talk about all the parameters the moment we say what is the pressure and the temperature its volume is fixed. So, this is the kind of situation we uh, will encounter also in the context of gas metal interactions. So, it is not possible to go back to the from the very uh, basic level of thermodynamics. So, I just want to briefly explain some of the concepts which are helpful for us to follow the current thermodynamics. So, the there are different thermodynamic functions. Okay. Okay, in that we have so called internal energy, we have a Gibbs free energy, we have a Helmholtz free energy, and enthalpy. So, these are the four thermodynamic potentials which all uh, the, uh, some of them have uh, originated from the combination of the first and second laws of thermodynamics that is the internal energy and the Gibbs energy and Helmholtz free energy and the enthalpy are actually the derived uh, functions so called auxiliary functions which also have the uh, uh, nature of the state functions. 
and the for example, for the Gibbs energy which is what uh, we will be always considering in our course. So, the state of the Gibbs energy of a system depends on temperature, pressure, comma composition. So, if we want to say that the uh, Gibbs energy of a particular system is constant that implies that it has a constant temperature, pressure and its chemistry is fixed that means number of moles of different constituents in the system. So, the change in this Gibbs energy okay, represented by T z is V d p minus S d t plus summation of N i mu i. This mu i is nothing but the chemical potential of i ok. So, this is how we can say that how the Gibbs energy change for a system can be represented. So, as one can see this, so this should be S d t ok, V d p minus S d t plus summation of the uh, products of uh, mole number of moles multiplied by the chemical potential of the corresponding species. So, you have a, a mixture of uh, let us say 2, 3 uh, constituents in the system. Now, each one e having its own chemical potential. So, it is like a uh, like a gravitational potential or a electric potential this is about how fast it can move from you know the uh, across the gradients just because of the differences in the chemical potential. So, now when it comes to the uh, this chemical potential what we will be considering now more in detail. So, for example, we are interested in the reactions. So, you let us say that we have a reaction A plus B going to C plus D. If you have an equilibrium for such a reaction and let us say that number of moles of A and number of moles of B are given as here N C and N D. So, if this reaction is under equilibrium that implies delta G of this reaction is equal to 0. So, th that implies that actually that means actually if we uh, relate this you know the uh, equilibrium with the equilibrium constant. So, then it will be delta G naught equal to minus R T L n k. So, this k is k is actually the equilibrium constant. So, how we can write this equilibrium constant k equal to suppose let us say that now we are A, B, C and D. Let us assume that all of them are gases like A, B, C, D and then when we write the equilibrium constant then in the it will be written as a uh, fugacity of C, fugacity of D and C and D divided by fugacity of A power N A and fugacity of B power N B. So, this is how we represent the equilibrium constant of a reaction. So, the fugacity is nothing but an effective pressure which a gas is able to exert right. So, if we assume a ideal gas behavior assuming ideal gas behavior for individual gases as well as when they are present in the gas mixture. So, then we can replace fugacity by the partial pressure. Let us say fugacity of I can be replaced by the partial pressure of I and then with respect to the uh, reference pressure right that can be simply the uh, partial pressure. Yeah? So, simply the partial pressure fugacity is represented by the partial pressure. Now, how we can uh, relate this is 
if I write in the form of a ideal situation right. So, it means a ideal gas behavior. So, these things can be replaced by partial pressure of C multiplied by partial pressure of T divided by partial pressure of A multiplied by partial pressure of B. Now, in principle by from the uh, Dalton's law of partial pressures, partial pressure is related to the total pressure with respect to the mole fractions. Okay. Let us say partial pressure of A equal to mole fraction of A multiplied by the total pressure P naught total pressure P naught. So, with this we can relate actually the partial pressure with the total pressure via the mole fractions of A. So, if we if we know that from how many number of moles our reaction starts let us say that we start with certain number of moles of A and B then in principle we can find out what would be the equilibrium amounts of a, B and C, D in the reaction chamber after it reaches the equilibrium. Okay, so, that means we can write the K, the value of K, these all partial pressures can be represented with the mole fractions and then by knowing the total size of the system at least the initial states of the system like of which what number of moles we are starting, we can actually in principle solve for the number of moles of individual species. So, this uh, exercise can be done by the using the delta G naught values that means, by, by knowing the delta G naught values we will be able to find out the equilibrium composition of individual uh, species in the system. Now, this delta uh, G naught what does this G naught stands for? Okay. So, for example, if we have a Okay, let us go back to the chemical potential, how we can write the expression for a chemical potential. So, the chemical potential mu i is given as for that means, the chemical potential of component i mu i naught okay, I will come to that plus R t L n. Let us say if it is a gas mixture then we put fugacity otherwise we put partial pressure if we assume a ideal gas behavior P i by P naught. Okay. So, now what is this mu i naught stands for? So, concept of chemical potential comes into picture when we are talking about where the mixture of either gases or mi mixing in solid state that means, when we have a mixture. So, it is like a partial uh, molar volume for example, when we mix two three things together we can still say what is the partial molar volume as if if this entire volume is occupied by that I mean number of moles what would be the uh, uh, the pressure exerted by them with that we can able to calculate what would be the partial molar volume. So, in this case now for example, we have a A and B together in a let us say you have a pure I. Okay. Let us say that it is a gas pure I gas which I can keep it at a given temperature comma pressure and that will have some value of Gibbs energy. Okay. It will have some values of Gibbs energy okay. G of I at the given temperature comma pressure. That means, this I is because it is in a pure state I use the term G naught right. Now, if I mix this I okay, into some mixture like I plus J okay, and now what would be the and it is also kept at some temperature and pressure. Now, what would be the Gibbs energy is associated with I in this mixture. Okay. What will be the G I prime that means, it is a partial molar Gibbs energy of I in the mixture I plus J that is what we also use the symbol often mu I. Okay. This means actually the partial molar Gibbs energy 
or you know the writing it in the form of a chemical potential it is one and the same. So, now in order to say what is the chemical potential in the mixture we need to have a reference state with respect to that how it is changing right that is where we have a some reference state it is not necessarily the pure I which we consider yeah. So, now this mu I naught is actually function of temperature at any chosen reference pressure pressure P naught. So, that means this reference state one can choose not necessarily always a pure I can be chosen as a reference state or it can be even a compound of I plus J in which I can fix also the reference state. Okay, that we will see how uh, you know it helps in uh, choosing a reference state for a convenience in mathematically deriving the expressions. Now, if we write this is about the chemical potential of I and now this is the reference state potential and then this is the reference state pressure P naught. If it is a pure I as in the reference state then this part will vanish right because then the partial pressure will become total pressure P naught and P are equal then this term will become 0 then what you are talking is about the Gibbs energy of that particular species in their reference state. So, now actually if once we know the reference state okay, how these reference states can be chosen okay, that will be uh, always important to clearly indicate. Yeah. For example, if we want to see the reaction equilibrium which we discussed in the previous slide right. So, this reaction in which we saw that we have all the gases. Now, I can have a reaction where some species are gases and some are in solid state right. That means, I have a reaction having a, a solid okay, plus B gas in equilibrium with C gas plus D solid. Okay. Again you can have number of moles of A, number of moles of B, number of moles of C and number of moles of D. So, now this S stands for the you know the in the solid and G stands for it is in a gaseous state. Now, when we write the equilibrium constant for this reaction now, for this side actually where we have a gas I mean the for the gas if you assume a ideal nature. Okay. So, then we write actually the partial pressure of C power N C multiplied by when you have a solid we use the term activity okay. activity of D power N D. I okay. will come to what is the you know the meaning of activity in this case divided by similarly here to that would be partial pressure of B power N B and then partial uh, sorry activity of A power N A. Okay. This is how we can write this uh, the equilibrium constant okay. and then we can again relate it to the delta G naught of this reaction with this R T L and K. Okay. So, now what is this activity? Okay. Now, if we the, the the activity is nothing but let us say that we have a uh, solid okay, a pure pure A solid okay, kept at some temperature and pressure then it develops certain equilibrium vapor phase okay, that means it, it if I keep this in a vacuum vacuum chamber okay suppose this is under vacuum initially then some amount of a atoms will leave the solid okay they evaporate and create actually a certain vapor pressure of a in the chamber and then this vapor phase will come in equilibrium with the solid phase okay that is treated at the that value is called as a P A 
not. That means, the equilibrium vapor pressure of A for pure solid A. Okay. Now, similarly like in a gas mixture, if I place the some amount of A in a A B solid, if I have a AB solid again kept at some temperature and pressure constant temperature and pressure and then I evacuate it the chamber and leave it then slowly the A and B atom starts to evaporate and you produce here a AB vapor or gas. Okay. Okay, I do not want to go into the details of how you distinguish vapor and gas, but you will end up with the AB atoms being there. So, initially a and B atom starts to evaporate after some time it stops. So, we are in the now once we reach an equilibrium now here we can talk about partial pressure of A okay, and a partial pressure of B. Okay. We can define the partial pressure of A and B in the you know the atmosphere around the A B solid. Now actually the, the activity okay, when we say that uh, very often we use the activity some somebody is very active or not active then we always say that with reference to something. So, when it comes to this uh, situation of this you know activity in the thermodynamic concept. So, this is also about suppose if it is a pure one pure A solid that has a certain you know the uh, pressure P A in a mixture what would be the pressure. Okay. This ratio is considered as a activity, activity is nothing but partial pressure of A divided by P A naught. Okay. This is how we define the activity of A. Now, this value depends on what kind of mixture we are taking. Now, that is a A B mixture. So, in a A B mixture solid mixture, then when we define activity of A that is equivalent to the partial pressure of A equilibrium uh, partial pressure of A exerted by the A B solid you know, divided by the, the vapor pressure of A at a given temperature. Okay. So, that is how we define the activity. So, by definition it is activity is dimensionless. So, now if your vapor phase whatever is developing right which we are considering to equilibrate with the condensed phase that is the solid that may not necessarily behave ideally. Right. So, if that vapor phase is behaving non ideally then you use more precisely fugacity of A divided by fugacity of A in the reference state. Yeah. So, one can actually design a, a situation such that in the reference state that is behaving ideally, but in other situation it is behaving non ideally where I will take the fugacity. Okay. So, by taking them one can actually uh, uh, you know get an interpretation for the uh, activity. So, in that case how do we write the activity okay, in the solid state. So, what we write here this is for the gas phase this expression what we wrote here is for a gaseous phase. For a solid chemical potential of I component I in a solid okay, is given by mu I naught okay. again this is about the in a reference state what would be the chemical potential plus R T L n here the term activity of I will be used. Okay. Here we are using actually fugacity in case of uh, gas mixture, but in case of a solid mixture we are using the activity of that particular component I. If we assume that it is a ideal solution that means, this vapor phase here simply follows actually that this solid is you know the ideal solid solution for example, then we can replace this A I by the mole fraction okay, mu i naught plus r t l n x i okay, that is how one can define the uh, mole fraction. So, now one may wonder when we take this reference state as in a pure state right, then actually we will there is no meaning for partial molar Gibbs energy or the chemical potential it is simply the Gibbs energy right we only talk about partial molar Gibbs energy when we are talking about a mixture. 
because this is always written in this fashion because you can choose also in a mixture in which the element is present as a reference state ok. It is not necessary that it is always a pure element we take that is why it is always uh, you know the uh, written as a chemical potential uh, phi in the reference state ok. It may turn out to be only simply G naught that is the Gibbs energy if we take a reference state as a pure uh, component which we are considering. So, with this uh, little bit of uh, you know the thermodynamic uh, introduction, so I would now uh, move on to actually talking about the actual process of nitriding, how we can deal with the thermodynamics of gaseous nitriding ok. Thank you. Thank you.